Hey, Bunny. What? Let's talk about books. You see, people always ask me, hey, Steve, how have you stayed at work with the same company for so long? To which I say, wow, too soon, Bunny. <laughs> but as is the case, as is the case with most with the mo- most of the uncomfortable moments in my life, I would like to answer your question with a movie quote. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can ever imagine. Jungle Book was oh. awesome. Drops Mike. <laughs> then picks up Mike, dusts off Mike, and puts Mike back on Mike's stand because Mikes are expensive. <laughs> People also say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that Trump can't read. No, Period. not at all. Not at all. And that up until recently, I was an employee at my local bookstore for over 17 years. <laughs> Then they fired me along with approximately 1,800 full-time employees. Ooh, thanks, Obama. In a cheap, low-down, underhanded way to have cash on hand to to appease investors and probably secretly to hopefully cauterize the bleeding of their failing company. Now, the 1,800, if that is not a gritty sci-fi teen series of books <laughs> it should be yeah that's, um, that's coming as a recommendation surprised. yeah i'd be surprised if it, if there wasn't one already and when they decided to fire almost 2000 employees blindly and without taking things into consideration like uh, how long has this person been with the company or this other person has physical disabilities or this person is a wildly popular storyteller with a massive following and he has PTSD from an incident that happened at work and maybe firing that guy is a huge fucking mistake. But that brings us sadly to today to the shocking series finale of Notes from the Bookstore. Dun, dun, dun. You've already made your fucking brother cry. She will not stop hitting him. Get away from him. Get away from him. She's just been getting toys and just hitting him with it. Pretty sure we book this time. Book this time? Well, Tiny book, but it was a board book. And this week's episode of Notes from the Bookstore is brought to you by Capitalism. Hey, nice planet you got there. Be a shame if, you know, it was destroyed to make me money. (laughs) Capitalism. Mm -hmm. Now, before we get to the nitty gritty of Notes from the Bookstore, I wanted to start off this last episode of Notes from the Bookstore by discussing the topic that I was originally going to talk about this week. Okay. And that. That is the Llama Llama series of kids' books by author Anna Dudeny. Her books are very popular, and they got even more popular when uh, uh, rappers started rapping the book. Okay. There's some, uh, there's some uh, radio DJ at some rap radio station, and he, he had a long-running thing where he has a kid, and... Uh, the kid's favorite book is Llama Llama. So he would have, if, if a rapper shows up in the studio, he would have the rapper rap the Llama Llama book. And uh, <laughs> it was kind of a cute little thing and nobody cared. But then like uh, some famous rapper showed up. What's the name of the rapper who was also in the Fast and the Furious movies? Vin no, Vin Diesel's not. <laughs> Uh, Method Man, Red Man. No, nope. no. But anyway, anyway, one of these videos of of a uh, famous rapper rapping Llama Llama, he did such a good job. It went viral on YouTube and on Facebook, and suddenly everybody's talking about this Llama Llama series. And 
And now there's a brand new Netflix series, a cartoon on Netflix based on the Llama Llama books. And I am here to tell you to stay far, far away from the new Netflix show, Llama Llama. Don't watch it, people! <laughs> and to explain why, I need... Max, yes, Max Maxwell. Llama Llama is dangerous, evil. No, Llama Llama isn't dangerous or evil. But in order to explain why you shouldn't watch it, I need to talk about Dr. Seuss. Okay. So Dr. Seuss always dreamed of working in Hollywood, working with Hollywood. So in the 1950s, he made a movie. He wrote the script. He helped write the songs. It's called The 5,000 Fingers of Dr. T, and it's weird as hell. Yeah. I mean, if I tell you, did you know Dr. Seuss made a movie, whatever you think of in your head, it's about 10 times weirder than that. <laughs> okay. So it was that's too kind weird. of exciting. Yeah, no, it was it was too yeah. weird for it was too it was too weird for Hollywood. It, it wasn't a success, and that kind of killed Dr. Seuss's Hollywood plans. Then in the 1960s, like television came to him, and they're like, "Hey, we want to do a uh, animated version of one of your books." So they did The Grinch, and that's great. It's wonderful. The animated The Grinch. What be stealing all the Christmases? Mm -hmm. That's that. That was a huge, massive success. She's already broken. Was that? Was that really the first? Yes. Wow. Okay. But then after that, hold on, mommy's gonna put you in your chair. Okay. 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 So so, the Grinch was successful, and then the TV people said, "Hey, that's great. Uh, we're gonna make." We want to make some more animated specials based on your books. And Dr. Seuss said, okay. And so they made a number of other animated specials yeah. based on Dr. Seuss books. And uh, I own the majority of them. And I can tell you that they're all shit. <laughs> really? Yeah, they're all so bad. They're all so very, very bad. The thing that I love I about to, them I is that they were all them. they were all made in like the seventies during that up with people time, you know? Yeah. And so in the seventies, most kids' movies, most kids' shows had that sort of chorus of bland, unoffensive white people all singing in perfect harmony. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I mean, in all reality, just just look at uh, the Winnie the Pooh movie. Because that has a lot of it, too. But all of the all of the Dr. Seuss specials in the 70s all had that. The cat in the hat. Zippity doppa doo. Wow. Yeah. So uh, here comes the Lorax having some fun. Do wow. <laughs> so dr seuss got burnt he was burnt out and he's like you know what uh i'm not going to hollywood i'm not going to tv i'm not going to burbank no more selling my characters i'm done yeah no more selling out my characters to hollywood and stuff so then occasionally you know as he got older and older throughout the like uh late 70s and 80s and then uh a little bit of the 90s before he died, you know, Hollywood would come to Dr. Seuss. Okay, okay. We have an idea for a musical. Nope. Don't think so. And then Hollywood would leave and then Hollywood would come back. Okay, we've got an idea for a cartoon <laughs> where the cat in the hat is teaching kids about science and Dr. Seuss says, nope, I'm done. And then Hollywood's like, are you sure we have these... Uh, giant briefcases filled with money. Are you sure? <laughs> so many millions of dollars. And Dr. Seuss is like, yeah, uh, all the money in the world won't change that. Uh, not doing it. Not doing it at all. So, so basically, Dr. Seuss said, look, Hollywood, as long as I am alive, I'm not selling these characters. Okay. So 
Um, so the, meanwhile, Dr. Seuss's family is like, please, please, can you can you maybe sell a couple of them? Because that money will really help us out. And Dr. Seuss is like, no, as long as I'm, I'm alive, I, I am not going to just whore out my characters. And so the family together just said, OK, well, uh, we're all in agreement, right, that once Dr. Seuss dies, we're going to whore out characters and become millionaires, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's what happened. That's how they made that freaking Mike Myers cat in the hat. That makes sense. That's why um uh that's why uh the cat in the hat is now on PBS teaching kids about science. <laughs> that's why they're working on a Grinch animated movie for for Christmas this year. Yeah. That's why uh, you can now buy the cat in the hat on shirts, socks, um, catheters. <laughs> because, uh, because yeah, he dies and the family instantly went against Dr. Seuss's wishes. And that's how we got the cat in the hat movie. Basically that's llama llama. Okay. The Llama Llama book was really good. She made a second one, a third one, a fourth one, a fifth one, a sixth one. It started getting popular. And Anna Dudney's like, oh, hey, people are asking me if they want to do a cartoon, if they want to do a movie. And I'm like, no, as long as I'm alive. Yeah, that's not happening. Then she unexpectedly died. Oh, and when she died. Her family just said, excuse me, let me step over this corpse. And yes, Netflix, we would love for you to pay us money. <laughs> But it's important to note that this Netflix show is not what the author of the books wanted to happen. Oh, she okay. never wanted any of this to happen. She didn't want uh, llama llama toys, llama llama action figures. Like, no, she never wanted that. And now that's what's happening. It's 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 really tough defending your rights when you're dead. Yeah, yeah. But that's it. I think I saw that on Perry Mason or something. Yeah, Perry Mason. <laughs> uh, force of habit. God damn, this chicken is good. Nice. Nice. Thank you for that. Well, this is our 40th episode of Notes from the Bookstore. Yes. And sadly, it's going to be the last episode of Notes from the Bookstore. Dude, that's not Fourth and final. Yeah, 40th and final episode of Notes from the Bookstore. Mm -hmm. Because I was fired, and it still feels surreal. I flip hard between the seven stages of grief. Yeah. Five? I think it's seven. We should Jeez. Google this one of these days. Uh, I'm but going I don't five. I'm going 36. There's so anyway, did you, you know, sometimes I'm like, you know what? Fuck those guys. And then I'll go, but maybe they'll take me back. And then I'm like, no, fuck that. Yeah. In fact, Bunny. Five talked, stages. Yeah, five, five. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. So I flip hard between the 84 stages of grief. Yeah. And we've talked on the podcast before about how I've somehow made it to 40 years of age without a major death. Yeah. Probably the closest major death in my life was the, the recent-ish death of my mother-in-law, Janice. And while we're on this subject, the store that shall not be named, Volda Store, yeah. consider itself lucky that my mother-in-law died before they freaking fired me. Okay. Because, oh my freaking God, Janice would have killed everyone at that store. Uh, can you imagine yeah. Nana would do? Can you imagine if Nana was alive when I was fired? Oh my God. She would just be on the phone constantly. I want to speak to James Noble. <laughs> Yeah, she would be going nuts. She would be like leading boycotts and 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 protesting and like she would she would not rest until like kneecaps were broken. 
<laughs> but losing my job of 17 and a half years, it kind of sort of feels like I've suffered a major death. Yeah. Like, I, I lost this job. It was a very important part of me, and now it's gone, and I can't believe it. The saving People grace, use- though, is that they did not fire you because you were a shit. Yeah. 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 That, you know... Most people get fired because they're shit. Yeah. Yeah. You were a casualty. Yeah. People used to say that a store would be crazy to fire me, that I had the best job security ever, that, oh, I entertain kids. Like, if, if, if they ever fired me, then there would be riots. People would literally say that to me. Yeah. Well, fuck that. <laughs> um, I was fired. Mm-hmm. And the only reason was because I had a specific position that they were getting rid of. You'd think they would take things into consideration that there would be exceptions, but no, I was fired. So, fuck them. Yeah. I gave them almost two decades of my life. You bastards took most of my 20s and all of my 30s and uh, a good portion of the cartilage uh, in my kneecaps. Yeah. And then you just tossed me aside. Mm -hmm. So, fuck you. I still can't believe that I'm fired. I gave them so much of myself. And they just said, we're going to fire you to save money. Despite all the articles written about you in the corporate website and in the corporate newsletter. Despite your awards, your decades of service. We're going to fire you to save money. So, I'm not going to let these a-holes bring me down. That's right. I am going to be loud. And I'm going to go out there. And I'm going to do my story times. Mm -hmm. And I am going to entertain children and I'm going to make a name for myself and screw that company for not believing in me because I believe in me and my wife believes in me and the kids I entertain believe in me and and my family believes in me. Maybe not Eleanor. Maybe not. (laughs) Because she's a terrorist. Yeah, totally. She is. But if all of these people believe in me, then I don't need a corporation. So screw you guys and uh to loosely quote a line from walk hard the dewey cog story you just wait and see what i do now and that is it for notes from the bookstore forever good riddance drops mike then kicks it into a ravine (laughs) and then pees into the ravine and then, and then punches who in the face? And then punches Big Mike in the face. Who's Big Mike? Big Mike. Is, and why is he, does Maxwell know Big Mike? Oh, so he's a giant microphone. No, oh. Oh, gotcha. All right, then. 